Well, good morning, Chapel Hill. It's time once again for uh, our morning devotional. And for this morning's devotional, we are going to be looking in Luke's Gospel, chapter 22. And we will study uh, the implications of the Last Supper together. Um, before we go into that, I wanted to remind you that uh, the Lily Fund uh, that we're raising for from the, e the donations for the Easter Lilies is going to go uh, toward uh, tornado relief to a Methodist church that was struck by a tornado. And we're going to be sending some funds down there to help them in, in their rebuild. And so uh, we will honor them with that. We will have a single white lily uh, representing uh, the gift that we give uh, to them um, in lieu of these uh, of the Easter lily uh, donations. So if you want to give to that donation, you can send your check into the church. And um, we will uh, make sure it's earmarked uh, for Lily Fund or, or Tornado Fund, something like that. And then if, if that happens, we will, we will post that to that account and, and send that money, those monies on. And we will also at some point, on, on, probably on the website, uh, have a list of all of the names uh, where we, uh, people donated lilies uh, in honor of or in memory of uh, someone that we love. And so um, I encourage you to continue to do that. Also, I just wanted to re-emphasize, and one of the most important things as we draw near to Easter, I think, uh, one of the most important things is that we do as uh, a church that comes to worship in the parking lot of the church, I really encourage you to keep your windows rolled up. Um, I know there'll be a temptation to roll your window down, but uh, we're, the cars are gonna be parked in the park in the regular parking spots, and, and it's, it's wonderful to just kind of wave at somebody and say, we love you, and kind of have sign language or whatever, but, uh, d but we're gonna keep our windows rolled up uh, because we do love the people in the car next to us. And I know that you'll comply with that. We wanna, we wanna make sure that uh, we make this a wonderful and safe uh, time for everybody. Um, so let's bow our heads together. Father, we just thank you again as we uh, move toward and move through Holy Week uh, together. And as we go step by step, some of the events, the significant events of Holy Week, uh, we remember before you today uh, the Last Supper that Jesus had with his disciples. And as we read some of the wording that uh, he gave, uh, we ask you to give us a deep-seated impression of how much Jesus truly loves us in order that uh, he might do this for us. I pray your blessings on this reading in Jesus' name. Amen. And so uh, we are reading in chapter 22, and I'll drop down to verse 14, uh, Luke chapter 22, verse 14, if you have your Bibles with you. The Bible says, When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table, and he said to them, I have eagerly longed or eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds its fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves, among you. Uh, for I tell you that I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. He took the bread, gave thanks, and broke it. And he gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And um, as I, even as I say that, or read that verse, this is, this is just one of those memory verses that we have, remember, we have memorized as a church body uh, just through uh, countless times of repetition where we've uh, celebrated communion together. And those words, as we lift the bread and we lift the cup, um, Jesus says, uh, remember, do this whenever you take this bread and you take this cup. Do this uh, in remembrance of me. Remembrance. Memory is a, is a central uh, piece to the Last Supper. He was, Jesus was very concerned that his disciples not forget what he was doing. And it wasn't because he was going on an ego trip and he just, I, I want you to remember me, don't forget me, and I, I want to have a legacy, and it was, it's not about any of that stuff. But he knew that if they forgot what he was about to do, then it would have an everlasting impact uh, impact on not only the disciples themselves but also subsequent generations and generation after generation after generation that forgot what Jesus did when he laid down his life he became the Lamb of God who took away the sins of the world we just simply cannot forget that and so that was what was so important Jesus said don't forget the gospel you have to remember this you cannot forget this this is too valuable of information um, I, I, I found this little clip I wanted to read 
I don't even know, know that what this quote is from. It was just in some of my notes somewhere along the way I wrote this down. Um, I'm not sure who said it, um, but it says this, the failure to remember inevitably leads to a deep sense of lostness and disorientation. I want to read that again. The failure to remember inevitably leads to a deep sense of lostness and disorientation. Um, my... Uh, one of the struggles that I have personally in my life is that my mother is now um, suffering some of the, the symptoms of, of memory loss. Um, and and, and, and um, it's one of the frustrations of old age that we all uh, are familiar with in our families. We we've all have a story to tell. And um, as my mother loses memory, there's, there is disorientation. Um, there is a sense of lostness, and so uh, Jesus, in, in more, uh, in, in, a, in a more pure sense that we could ever imagine, if we forget what Jesus did, we will have this sense of disorientation and this sense of lostness, because what He did for us uh, is is the essence, is the foundation of our identity. That He gave His life, uh, the word of the, of the gospel, John three sixteen. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And so what Jesus did for us, when he died on the cross, was buried in a tomb, and raised from dead, when he did that for us, we call it the Christ event, um, that took care of our sins and our salvation. And, and it was it's that that we focus on, it's that that we trust. When we come to the end of our lives, and we ask ourselves, why in the world am I, how in the world am I ever going to make it to heaven? The answer to that question is not because I've been good enough. The answer to that question is, I've been, I hope I've done more good than bad in my life. The answer to the question is because Jesus, the pure, perfect Lamb of God, was sacrificed for our sins. And we lean and trust fully on His work, not on our works, because our works were never good enough. The only thing that our works ever bought us was the death penalty. The wages of sin is death, and that's what we deserve. But Jesus, who did not deserve to die, who had no sin, who was completely, completely innocent, he paid that price for us, and that's the nature of the gospel. Another word that I, in, this, in this text that I wanted to highlight for us, another phrase, is that when Jesus, and I think I said this in an earlier devotion, when Jesus said, I have eagerly desired, I've longed to be with you in this meal. And um, again, there's the debate in, in Methodist Church and uh, across the, the, the nation. How do you do communion when we're isolated, when we're, when we're doing this um, compassionate distancing? How do, how, do you, how do you celebrate the Lord's Supper? Um, the Lord's Supper, is not, Lord's Supper is not built for uh, this kind of uh, separation and isolation. And many, many people have ideas like, well, we'll do drive, you know, communion drive throughs where we just kind of hand these sterile packages to people and they drive off. Or we can do it over the internet where we, uh, I'll break some bread here and you can break some bread home, um, which you know, kind of violates the one loaf part, you know, participating in one loaf kind of thing. And so there's a lot of you know, theological issues as to how, how do you do this in, in, in segregation and isolation. And the thing I've always fallen back on is that my, the hope is that, that we will readopt or once re, re uh, discover this, this um, yearning that Jesus talked about, this earnest longing uh, to, to get together. And so when we have that first, <laughs> when we get back together again, we have that first communion, I think it will be so significant. It'll, it'll, it will taste in a, in, a, in a spiritual sense, it will taste so good to be together and to be able to ce uh, uh, celebrate that uh, Last Supper together once again. Uh, and I think that's a good thing. I, I think the longing to be together is, is a good thing that, uh, in a sense, is a gift to the church. So remember, longing and remembrance are the two highlights that I wanted to draw this passage for us this morning. Let's bow our heads together. Father, thank you for your love for us as we, uh, as we do long to be together again in the uh, blessings uh, the grace that comes to us uh, in communion. I pray that you would give us the patience and again, a renewed sense of longing to be with each other. Help us never to forget what Jesus has done for us. 
Help us never to forget the impact that has made on who we are. We thank you for all the graces that we receive. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless you, Chapel Hill. Have a great day.